Hi everyone, welcome to the channel Sluggers View for your CAT PRC preparation. Uh, today we'll be taking up, in today's session, we'll be taking up uh, the third RC that was asked in the first lot of CAT 2019. Uh, this RC also serves as the first RC for your culture and social sciences genre, which is the second genre that we have picked up for your, uh, or as part of this course. Uh, I've titled the RC as uh, Topophilia, a bond between people and place, uh, 507 words, five questions, quite standard uh, as per cat. And uh, yeah, so let's start. Now, for those of you who might be watching this session for the first time, know that the session is split into two parts. Part one, which is the passage explainer, where I, where I take you through the through each and every paragraph of the passage and explain it in detail by the use of a schematic diagram. And part two is where I take you through the questions. The current video is is part one. What you're watching right now, every session has two videos. This video is part one. And 40 such sessions make up a course that I've titled as an anthology of RCs for your reading comprehension preparation for the CAT. So, uh, and those of you who have not watched the intro video and you are interested to know the details of the course, you can watch the intro video of this course by clicking on a cue card on the top right side of your screen does that uh, there should be you should be able to see a uh, letter i there and if you click on that it will show you the thumbnail of the intro video where which you can click and uh, we'll check out the details of the course all right so let's jump into the passage explainer now okay so now guys uh, this is the passage explainer part of the video your passage explainer screen the screen the current screen is uh, split into two parts on the left side you uh, is where we'll have the passage as you can see here and on the right side is where we'll have the schematic diagrams. Now, the way we'll go about this is that I'll read and explain the passage paragraph by paragraph as the schematic diagram simultaneously appears on the right. Okay. Post reading every paragraph, I'll explain the same in detail by the use of the schematic diagram that will have appeared by that time and then move on to the next paragraph. All right. So let's start with the first paragraph. Okay, guys. So let's start with the first paragraph. It says, uh, as defined by the geographer Yufu Tuwa, topophilia is the effective, affective bond between people and place. His 1974 book set forth a wide-ranging exploration of how the emotive ties with the material environment vary greatly from person to person and in intensity, subtlety, and mode of expression. Factors influencing one's depth of response to the environment include uh, cultural background, gender, race, and historical circumstance. And Tuan also argued that there is a biological and sensory element. Topophilia might not be the strongest of human emotions. Indeed, many people feel utterly indifferent towards their uh, environments that shape their lives. But when activated, it has the power to elevate a place to become the carrier of emotionally charged events or to be perceived as a symbol. All right. So, guys, that was the reading of your uh, first paragraph. Uh, so what the author has done here in this uh, in, the, in the essentially what he has done in the first para is given you an introduction to the topic that he's going to talk about throughout the passage just topophilia now topophilia uh in, in topophilia the word topo stands is a, is a greek root for place okay i'll just that's a greek root for place and philia is the root for love right so 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 topophilia is basically your a, a person's love for a place and uh, so, so the, there are two parts to the paragraph. In the first part, he basically tells you that topophilia is basically uh, it's it's uh, the affective bond between people and place, right? Uh, an emotional bond that people develop toward a place. And uh, well, it it varies from person to person, and it generally also varies in terms of intensity, subtlety, and mode of expression. And the depth, like these aspects of the depth of response, further depend on factors such as the person's cultural background, their gender, their race, historical circumstances, and uh, especially according to Yifu Tuan, uh, also uh, biologically, it also has a biological and sensory element. That's the first part. So he's basically, he's giving you what he's talking about in the first part, what topophilia is, how it varies, and what factors it depends on, right? In the second part, uh, he, talk, he basically gives further description of topophilia. He says that it's not the strongest of uh, human emotions, but if activated it can elevate the uh, the perception of a place in the person's in a person's psyche to, uh, as uh, to a symbol right right for example like, like think of uh, if you try to think of your school uh, in, in most of your cases you, you guys most of you guys must be able to relate to this like uh, 
see, try to think of your school or maybe try to think of uh, the neighborhood that you grew up in, right? When you were a kid, uh, you, you don't just think of those places in terms of uh, just places, right? They're not just geographical locations. In fact, there is, there is, there is, in most cases, there'll be a strong emotive element that you will be able to associate with your school or with, your, with the neighborhood where you, where you grew up in, right? So, so that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the, the bonding that people end up having with certain places. Okay, so that's what the first paragraph is about. He's, so, so what the author has essentially done here, done here is uh, he has basically in, given an introduction of to the topic that he's going. He intends to talk about in the rest of the passage. Okay, so with that we're done with the first paragraph. Let's start with the next one. Okay, so let's start with the second paragraph. Aesthetic appreciation is one way in which people respond to the environment. A brilliantly colored rainbow after gloomy uh, after gloomy afternoon showers. A busy street alive with human interaction. One might experience the beauty of such landscapes that had seemed quite ordinary only moments before or that are being newly discovered. This is quite the opposite of a second topophilic bond, namely that of acquired taste for certain landscapes and places that one knows well. When a place is home or when a space has become the locus of memories or the means of, a, of gaining a livelihood, it frequently evokes a deeper sense of attachments than those predicated purely on the visual. A third response to the environment also depends on human senses, but maybe tactile and olfactory, namely a delight in the feel and smell of air, water, and the earth. So, guys, uh, this is the this is your second paragraph. That's the reading of your second paragraph. And then it's what uh, what the author has uh, basically done here is he is uh, after talking about giving the introduction of topophilia in the first para and giving further description of the same here in the first para. In the second paragraph, he has talked about the various types or various instances of different topophilic bonds. The first one is the is that of aesthetic appreciation, where uh, uh, things that would normally seem ordinary, you might suddenly find some sort of, you might suddenly be able to associate some sort of value to them, right? You, you, you are able to find them beautiful, like, like uh, the case of, he has given examples of, a, a rainbow after a uh, after gloomy afternoon shots or maybe just a bustling and busy street that's the first case there's no there's no there doesn't seem to be any strong emotional ties here right and uh, and then he talks about the second case where where the where the topophilia bond is that of acquired taste now this is the case where uh, the emotional ties the involvement of emotional ties is the strongest right uh, because it relates to as the author says it relates to Maybe the place that you have, you have been living at, or the place that you have been working, you, you have some memories associated with that, right? So, so you automatically uh, uh, elevate this place uh, to be kind of, you know, uh, uh, to to have a symbolic significance for you. <clears throat> okay, so that's the second case of topophilia, topophilic bonds, and the third one is, uh, the third one is very says that uh, a third response to the environment also depends on the human senses, but maybe tactile and olfactory. Tactile basically means related to the sense of touch. Olfactory means related to the sense of smell. So there's a, there's a, there, he basically says that there can also be a third type of bond where, uh, which is based on your sense of touch and uh, smell. Uh, like uh, for example, the delight in the feel and smell of air, water or the earth, right? So, so what the author has at the end of it, uh, in the, uh, for, uh, the second paragraph done is he has just talked about the various types of topophilic bonds. Okay, so that's about your second para. Let's start with the next one. All right, guys. So let's start with the third para. Topophilia and its very close conceptual twin, sense of place, is an experience that, however elusive, has inspired recent architects and planners. Most notably, new urbanism seeks to counter the perceived placelessness of modern suburbs and the decline of central cities through new traditional design motives. Although motivated by good intentions, such attempts to create places rich in meaning are perhaps bound to disappoint. As to one noted, purely aesthetic responses often are suddenly revealed, but their intensity rarely is long lasting. Topophilia is difficult to design for and impossible to quantify, and its most articulate interpreters have been self reflective philosophers such as Henry David Thoreau, evoking a marvelously intricate sense of place at Walden Pond and Tuan describing his deep affinity for the desert. So guys, that was the reading of your third paragraph. So in this paragraph, what the author has basically talked about 
primarily he has, he has talked about how about design endeavors of planners and architects uh, who have been inspired by the idea of top of really about uh, by the idea of uh, people feeling connected to places and they are, they are trying to use this idea to counter the placelessness of modern suburbs and uh, the decline of central cities right how how uh, so, so what he means by that is uh, the sense that the lack of connection that people generally might feel with the modern the way modern suburbs are designed right uh, the, the 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 planners and the architects are trying to counter that lack of uh, connection by 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 designing the uh, by 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 designing the architecture in such a manner uh, so that the users or the people who live there might be might actually be able to relate to it right and hence might feel topophilic towards it depends they might feel connected to it right so that's what he means uh, by by saying that uh, they're trying to counter the perceived placelessness of modern suburbs and the decline of central cities through neo traditional design motifs a motif is basically a kind of theme that reoccurs uh, in uh, various pieces of art and neo traditional basically means new is new and traditional is old that means uh, using old uh, types of design motifs in a new manner right so so that so and then why why do they want to keep traditional probably because uh, they they still want people to be able to better connect to it right uh, uh, because the modern suburbs have anyways turned out to be uh, uh, instances where people are not able to relate much, right? So, so that's what he means in the first in the first part, where he says that yes, planners and architects are attempting to uh, use topophilia to counter this problem, and then he goes on to in fact uh, cite the limitations in this approach, right? What what will be the problems and why this is something that cannot be done? He basically says that aesthetic response uh, he talks about he first talks about uh, aesthetic responses right which is the which is the uh, first type of topophilic bond is, is something that uh, there's something that is very suddenly relieved it's it's very spontaneous and then more importantly uh, its intensity is not very long lasting it doesn't last for long okay and and and, and moreover topophilia is uh, topophilia uh, as such is uh, is a phenomena that is very difficult to design for like it's very, so what he means to say here is that it's very difficult to design an architecture where you can ensure that the person might feels that that almost everyone might feel some connection towards it right it's very difficult to design for and it is also very difficult to quantify like how how are you, how are you going to quantify uh, a feeling right a feeling of connection that a person might feel towards a place uh, and, and and he goes on to describe uh, some specifics and instances here he says that the like, uh, the most articulate interpreters of topophilia have been self reflective philosophers by like henry david david thoreau and tuan himself so basically what he means to say by by uh, giving these examples is that 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 the experience of topophilia can be quite subjective and and the people who are able to articulate it uh, have been generally been really uh, intense self reflective self reflective reflective philosophers and then given these kind of differences and variations and subjectivity when it comes to the phenomena of topophilia it is not something that is easy to design for and almost impossible to quantify so so essentially he has, he has provided the he has listed the limitations uh, the, the, the related to the related to the endeavor of uh, designing uh, for topophilia right uh, which the planners are, or the architects are trying to do so that's your third para let's move on to the next one okay guys so let's start with the fourth paragraph uh, topophilia connotes a positive relationship but it often is useful to explore the darker affiliation between people and place patriotism literally meaning the love of one's terra patria or homeland has long been cultivated by governing elites for a range of nationalistic projects including war preparation and ethnic cleansing residents of upscale residential developments have disclosed how important it is to maintain their community's distinct identity often by casting themselves in a superior social position and by reinforcing class and racial differences and just as a beloved landscape is suddenly revealed so to may landscapes of fear cast a dark shadow over a place that makes one feel a sense of dread or anxiety or topophobia so that's that guys is the reading of your fourth paragraph so guys what he has done what the author has done in the last paragraph is basically th uh, thrown some light on the negative aspects of topophilia here 
okay he starts with uh, talk by by talking about how uh, behind the facade of patriotism a form of topophilia uh, often government elites uh, use the facade of patriotism to propagate other nationalistic projects or agendas uh, ranging from uh, war or something to to something as evil as uh, ethnic cleansing right so that's the first darker aspect that he points out and the second second aspect he very 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 talks about how residential uh, how residents of upscale resi residential communities or developments they often uh, see that it is important for them to maintain uh, the community's distinct identity by creating very strong boundaries right and then uh, which which they use to almost look down upon uh, the people from communities which are not so affluent probably right and uh, so and, and, and so, so essentially casting themselves in a superior light right uh, or, or position and by 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 reinforcing these class and racial distinctions and then what happens as a result of this is that where earlier topophilia used to be uh, uh, like in, in, the, in the positive sense topophilia was about associating positive feelings and positive emotions with place in this case what happens is at least for the community that is being looked down upon they end up associating fear and negative emotions with respect to the landscapes or like for example in this case these residential developments uh, uh, the the residents of which look down upon them right so so, so normally normally people no, normally topophilia would be more about would be about uh, associating positive feelings with the landscape or a place in this case it just happens that it, it becomes a case of topophobia instead phobia is fear right and topo is place so where where the where the residents of these poorer communities probably less affluent communities end up uh, developing a sense of fear with respect to certain places okay so that's that, and that's what he talks about in the last paragraph basically pointing out the negatives of this idea of topophilia and well topophobia okay so that's your last para okay guys now now before we move on to the central idea part right, there's, there's something i want to talk about now often i i get queries from learners in terms of uh like 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 they they find the passage to be too chaotic there's so much going on there's so many ideas here and uh, when they have read uh, when they when they start reading the third paragraph they all, it's almost like they've forgotten what the first paragraph was about right and then now this is basically a concern guys guys that a problem that arises mainly because uh, of the way you're looking at the passage like like at what level of resolution are you trying to view the passage are you trying to so if you try to for example if you if you try to if if there's if, if there's a student who's trying to uh, you know take note of the ideas in the passage at a very high resolution level so that he almost treats each and every sentence as a separate idea then obviously the whole passage will become too chaotic for him it's, it's not easy it's not uh, easy at all it's in fact extremely difficult to keep track of each and every sentence in the passage right and, and, and it's not uh, definitely something that I'll, that I'll i will not advise that advise that okay so so that's the that's one end of the spectrum on the other end of the spectrum you have people who who go for the extreme low resolution view which is essentially the, the central idea and which will help you but but only it will help you only in the case of maybe one question which which talk which is which is a, which may which which might be about the central idea of the passage yes so that that does have some utility that the high low resolution view of the passage like like what the passage is essentially about or what is the central idea of the passage that has some utility but it is limited to just maybe one question that relates to central idea so well the question arises the next subsequent query would be then then what would be the optimum resolution at which to view a passage and i'll try to demonstrate that by by the following just pay attention here by the following mind map so guys as the passage starts for example in case of this passage the author started with the introduction where he talks about the details of topophilia he defines topophilia and talks about variations in factors and then talks about the potential of topophilia in terms of uh, uh, associating significance to places right next he talks about the various types of topophilia the first one is aesthetic appeal second is acquired taste and third is touch and smell next he talks about the applications of topophilia as uh, conceptualized by planners and uh, architects and uh, and then goes on to talk about the limitations that related to those applications and finally he talks about a couple of negative aspects of the topo of the idea topophilia that's it this is the level of resolution at which you should be trying to recall content in a passage trying to remember 
content in the passage. If you go too high resolution, you won't be able to remember too much or you'll end, just end up spending too much time uh, being stuck on the same passage without any utility because there are just five questions, uh, the, the maximum five or six questions that you'll, be, you'll have to answer from the passage. And if you go too low, too, too low resolution, what, what you, you'll, you'll, just, you'll just be stuck in the cycle of regression. Like after every question, you have to go back to the passage and keep looking for where the point of reference is and then derive the answer. So in, 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 on either side of the spectrum, will end up spending too much of time and there'll be too much of chaos and you'll end up making mistakes. So the optimum resolution is the resolution of broad ideas, meta level ideas. What is he talking about? Introduction, details, definition, topophilia definition, details and potential. Then various types of topophilia, application limitations, two negative aspects. That's it. Okay. So I hope I was able to, you know, uh, help you understand you know, what level of resolution is optimum here. So with that, let's move on to the next part. Okay, guys, the central idea of the passage can be described by the following para, short para. Uh, it would be that topophilia and affective bond between people and places that varies subjectively and has many variants is an elusive phenomenon, thus rendering it impossible for architects and planners to reap its positive benefits. It also has darker dimensions exemplified in the manipulative and domineering behavior of the government and social elites respectively. Okay, so that will be your central idea. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next part. Okay, guys, so now for those of you who have not attempted the questions so far, uh, you can do so by clicking on the link uh, given in the description of, uh, of the video. Uh, and it will take you to the link will take you to an interface where you can attempt the where you can, where you can read the passage as well as attempt the questions and uh, yeah so that's about it so far as this video is concerned those of you who, who have not watched the intro video of the course uh, you can do so by clicking on the link here and uh, so do subscribe to the channel i'll uh, see you meanwhile in the next part where we discuss the questions of the passage okay